everyone. Um, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, this is my first like bigger conference talk, so um, you might be feeling the afternoon dip a little bit, um, <laughs> but I'm hoping that with this lightning talk, I can really reinvigorate you. Um, it's going to be pretty fast paced. I'm going to do some live coding. Hopefully everything will work. Uh, and by the end, I'm hoping to give you something that you can use right away, no matter what tech stack you're on. So the other day, that's the wrong one. The other day, um, I was trying to fix this bug. Um, I was working on an e-commerce app, and uh, it was a really tough bug. I tried so many things, and what made this one really annoying was that it happened at the end of checkout. And that means that every time I make a change, I have to go through the entire process, fill out all the forms, uh, and get to the end again to see if it actually worked. And I'm just thinking, like, how much time am I spending just trying to fill out these forms? And not only the time, but it's just the context switching, the repetitive actions. It's, it's killing my productivity. It's eating away at my mind. And I'm like, I'm not getting paid to fill out forms. So, <laughs> but I'm thinking, like, we know that tests are supposed to solve this problem, right? We just write a test, um, run it, and it should tell us if everything works or not. But this bug was covering multiple pages, uh, touching on a bunch of different APIs. So I was just feeling like this is going to be a pain to write a test for. And uh, I thought, well, should I just fill out the form one more time? <laughs> well, no. Uh, I'm not going to do that. In the next 10 minutes, I'm going to show you how I did solve this problem. So my name is Nemo. I'm a software engineer at I.O. And I love automating things, uh, especially if they improve my or my team's productivity. And tests are one of those things that improve my productivity. Um, when I talk to people about tests, they're always like, yeah, tests are awesome. But they never quite work in the way that we want them to. Um, so a few people feel a lot of resistance to writing tests. Uh, let me actu ask you, actually, uh, who of you has written a unit test in the past year, let's say? All right, quite a lot of people. What about integration tests? A little bit less, but still some. End-to-end -end tests? All right, all right. So I'm not entirely surprised. This is pretty close to uh, a survey that's been done last year uh, on all front-end developers. And um, we can do, definitely see that uh, unit tests are pretty popular, end-to-end -end tests, not so much. So um, unit tests are great. I mean, they focus on a very specific part of your app. Um, and they usually run some kind of simulated environment, which makes them fast, reliable. Um, but the great thing about end-to-end -end tests is that they run in a real browser. They pretty much work exactly the same as when a real user would use your app. Um, and to show you, actually, why I love end-to-end -end tests so much, uh, I'm going to jump into some code. So this is um, a Next.js app. It's uh, just a template. I didn't make this. Um, yeah, it's a web shop. And this is the uh, bug that uh, I was struggling with. So um, we see here at the end, we get a order ID with an object promise. So that doesn't look quite right. Um, so let's look at some code then, see if we can fix this. I'll make this a bit bigger for you. There we go. So this is the thank you page we were just looking at, and we are rendering this order ID. So let's try and do a console log of this order ID. And because this is a server rendered page, I should see the result here in my terminal. Let me refresh it. Yeah, there we go. We do indeed see it's an object promise. OK, so let's try and trace this back then. Um, this order ID is coming from a cookie here. And I know that we set this, uh, this cookie at the end of the payment step. So let's have a look at that then. Um, and here we see cookies.set order ID. So that's where it's coming from. So now if we try and log it here, um, OK, it's going to recompile, and it's going to show actually the same log because it's still here. If I remove this one, we don't see any logs because we are not on this page, right? So then, I mean, I guess I can try and navigate back in the browser, but that doesn't work. Like, my card is now empty because it's supposed to be. That's what's supposed to happen at the end of checkout. So 
I mean, I can do everything manually again, but I really don't want to. So I'm going to set up some end-to-end -end tests. And um, with modern tooling like Playwright, it's actually really easy to get started. I'm going to make a new directory called end-to-end -end and go into it. And I'm going to write npm init Playwright at latest. And it's going to ask me a couple of questions. I'm just going to pick the defaults. And I'm not going to install the browsers, because I already did that. Um, and that's actually all you need in terms of setup. So let's take a look at what it created for us. As you can see, it actually made a completely, whoops, don't put that in there, a completely isolated package here with Playwright as a dependency. But the cool thing is that this doesn't know anything about my code. Like I could be using React, Angular, Vue, even just some static HTML uh, pages. It really doesn't matter. Um, and I can even like put this folder in my git ignore, for example, and I can just keep working on it on my own until I'm ready to share it with my team. So let's write a test then. So we could do this manually, but I'm going to try and use the new recording feature in Playwright. Um, here I'm using the VS Code extension, but you can also use uh, just the CLI and it works the same. So if I click Record New, uh, we can see in the background here that I created this file, um, a test file, and it says Recording. And it also opened this browser window at the same time. So I'm just going to do whatever I would do normally to test this if I was trying it manually. Um, and I'm just going to pick like this hoodie, uh, pick my size, add it to the cart. And you can see that while I'm doing this, it's adding lines to this test, right? So you can see how it picked the hoodie, went to the checkout, all of that. Um, OK, so this one time, I will have to fill out the form. Um, put your favorite email placeholder. Um, the rest, I don't really care. I, I didn't write validation for this anyway. Uh, pick a country, a payment. Right, uh, there you go. Just pick something. Uh, and there we go. We're at the end. So now if I close the browser here, uh, let's look at this test that it made for us. So first it added the product. It filled out the whole form and everything. And then we uh, ended up on the order page. Um, so let's try and run this test then. Um, and to do that, I'm going to show you a new feature of Playwright, which is uh, Playwright test dash dash UI. It's the UI mode. And this is really cool. Um, I'll zoom in a bit for you. So on the left here, we see our tests. Uh, there are some examples, but we don't use those. Um, and actually, I'm going to give my test a name here, so it's a bit easier to recognize. I'm going to call this checkout flow. There we go. So now if I run this, and we wait a few seconds, we see how fast it just went through the entire form there. And here on the left, we see the different steps that it took. And if I hover over them, you can actually see the current state of the DOM at that step. We can look at all the console logs that happened during that time. We can look at the network calls. And something that's really cool is we have this timeline up here. And I can even select a part of the timeline to see which requests were made during that time. So it's not only a really cool testing tool, but it's also very nice for debugging as well. All right, so let's try and fix this bug then. Um, get back to my code. So I feel like it's probably something on the payment page. Um, does anyone have an idea? Does anyone see the bug already? Any suggestions? I think you may be right. And actually, this as any is kind of the smoking gun here. Because if we remove that, we can see that um, this function is expecting a string, but it's getting a promise of a string. So yeah, we just need to add the await here. And let's see if it works. So I'm going to go back to my tests, click play. And just in a few seconds, just visually, I can already see that it worked. I didn't even need to write any logic for it. It's just like that. So yeah, it looks like we fixed it. Let's have another look at the, the test again. So this test is definitely not perfect. Um, there's a lot of you know, redundant stuff, like it's clicking on things, pressing tab, uh, all stuff that's not necessary for a test to complete. Um, it's also, um, uh, we could add, for example, an, an assertion at the end. Like we could do, 
await um, expect the page to have some text, like get by text. Um, let's look for the order ID, for example, and then some numbers. Um, did I mess up? There, expect that to be visible. And now my test would actually fail if the order ID wasn't uh, visible. So what I want you to take away from this is that, okay, not that. It's okay to start with fragile tests, all right? Your, your tests don't have to be perfect for you to benefit from them now, especially if you're just using them as a way to uh, improve your own workflow rather than running it in CI or something like that. Um, so if you're excited about this, I would tell you just to start testing. Try it out for yourself. Um, and then once you're done, show your team, because it is so much easier to get them on board when you already have something that works. So have a look at the docs on playwright.dev. Uh, follow me on Twitter. And uh, yeah, I'd be happy to answer any questions for now or talk to you later. So thanks. <laughs>